to the channel and for those of you who are new my name is Cody so today is all about diagnosing what's been going on with my truck since I've owned it and I think I've had it about a year now I bought it in 2021 June or July somewhere in there uh, whenever you go up to about 40 mile an hour it throws a check engine light and that code is P1211 and that stands for injection control pressure higher or lower than desired so anyone who doesn't know these 7.3 power strokes it runs off the Huey injection system and what that stands for is hydraulically actuated, electronically controlled unit injection. Basically, it takes regular engine oil to lubricate, you know, the pistons and whatnot. It takes that same oil and runs it through a high pressure oil pump and it almost acts as like hydraulic oil and it fires each individual injector. Pretty cool 90s technology, but if it's not working right, it can cause a lot of problems. And so my first strategy to fix this was to do absolutely nothing and hope the problem just goes away by itself. But believe it or not, that didn't work. So now I'm stuck to having to fix it. So I have a list of tests that I'm going to be doing. But first, I want to give you a little bit of background. The previous owner put a lot of money into this truck. He had a mechanic replace a high pressure oil pump, replace the high uh, injection pressure regulator valve, amongst other things. And those still could be faulty parts. But for now, I'm just going to put them aside because they're, I think, less than a year old. Um, also, the ICP sensor could be bad, but I went ahead and replaced the ICP sensor. I, I bought one at O'Reilly's. The check engine light still came on, so I just returned that part and got my money back. So I'm starting with a fresh truck here. The tests I'm going to be running, uh, a couple are off the laptop here. I have a diagnostic tool called Forescan. Anyone who knows 73 Power Strokes knows that's a pretty common diagnostic tool. Uh, it'll be able to tell me and, and give me a live readout of each individual system like what the ICP pressure is what the IPR percentage is etc um, so that's one test just to see what it's doing also I'm gonna be doing an injector buzz test a cylinder contribution test uh, also I'm gonna be doing a fuel pressure test these have mechanical fuel pumps that run off a little lobe of the camshaft and also I'm gonna be running some shop air through the oil rails each individual injector has its set of o-rings that separate the fuel from the oil and so over years and years and a bunch of heat cycles, those O-rings, I've been told, can lose their roundness. So when you run shop air through there, you'll hear air escape immediately and maybe even see like oil bubbles popping through where the injector seat is. So that's what I suspect is the problem, is a bad O-ring, but I won't know for sure. I, I mean, I have to rip the valve covers off to, to find out, and it's a pretty in-depth test. So I'm going to do the simple things first and then kind of go more more in depth as the video goes along. So hope you guys enjoy and uh, I'm gonna get started. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna be doing the injector buzz test and I'm sorry for the glare here in the computer screen. It's the best shot I can get. So I'm gonna plug this into the OBD2 port and then turn on the truck. And once I connect it to the system, just at one click of a button, it'll be able to run each individual injector uh, solenoid and you'll be able to hear if there's any sound difference between all eight injectors. So all eight of those injectors sounded pretty similar across the board. I'm gonna put that out of my mind for now and move on to the next test. So the next test is going to be a cylinder contribution test and you need to have the engine warmed up to do this so while i'm getting the engine warmed up i thought i'd show you on a little test drive when the check engine light comes on and what it does after that all right so before i go on the test drive i want to show you the cold start it hasn't been started in about a day take long at all it usually takes a couple more runs to get it to turn on but about 45 mile an hour is when it came on all right so after that test this blue line here and again I apologize for the reflection in the screen but this blue line is the IPR valve the green is the ICP right when the check engine light comes on you're building boost you're at like 2,000 rpm and then it just drops off and immediately when that check engine light comes on it falls back down to about 15% on the IPR. The ICP does kind of the same thing. It doesn't drop 
as sharply or uh, as far down. It kind of stays steady. So again, I'm really sorry for the glare. That was awful, but it was at about 40% and that check engine light came on and it immediately dropped down to in the 20s. So just an interesting data point. I don't really know what to do with it for now, but I'm gonna move on to a cylinder contribution test. All right, took it on another test drive. Let's see if this oil's warmed up enough. There we go. I think that did it. So what the cylinder contribution test is doing is it's cutting out one cylinder at a time and then it's gonna see how it relates to the other eight. And so I'll just skip ahead to when the test is over with. That took a little bit longer than I thought it was gonna be, but it says right here, system pass. So now I'm gonna do a fuel pressure test and this is actually a tool kit that I rented at O'Reilly's. Now it cost me $170 to rent it, but I just bring the receipt back and they'll give me my, my money. So it's basically a free test. I'm gonna need this elbow here and an adapter because it is a pretty small thread uh, on the truck. This hose here is roughly, I'd say three feet long. So I'll be able to like duct tape it to the hood or something while I'm driving down the road and test it under load. Should be anywhere between like 40 to 60 PSI at all times. And that'll be a really good test. So we got those tiny two little fittings there. I'm just gonna hook up this last hose. So before I start work on those oil rails, I just want to quickly say that the cylinder co contribution test, it can only do so much for you. I mean, you're trying to figure out a mechanical problem using an electronic system. So you really need to do a compression test to see the real health of the engine. But what it does, is it cuts one cylinder out at a time and it just sees how all eight of those injectors relate to each other. And so it said the system passed, so I'm just gonna put it out of my mind for now. Again, this is just a process of elimination. As well as the fuel test, guys, the pressure did get all the way down to about 32, 33 PSI. So that is technically out of spec, but not by much. So, I mean, I was giving it maybe 50 mile an hour was the top speed I was able to go on those back roads. So for now, I'm just gonna put that out of my mind. If it was really a problem, I think it would be down like in 10, 20 PSI. There would have been like a kink in the line or something was clogged. It would have shown up on that gauge, but I think it's okay for now. And again, it's 20 some years old, so I'm gonna move on. I wanted to show you this air hose setup that I made. Now, I haven't seen much information on YouTube of how to build this, and that's why I'm doing it. I think it'll help someone out who wants to do this themselves. So that's all being hooked up to the air compressor. When I'm hooking up to the truck, I couldn't find the right fitting to hook up to those oil rails. It's a special fitting. So I just bought the oil lines that hook up to the high pressure oil pump that go to the oil rails. I had to find the straight fittings. Anyways, this is what I'm coming up with. This is gonna go into the truck and this will connect to that brass fitting. So the reason I have to use this hose, this is ORB. You can kind of see how this uh, little cone is at the end there. I couldn't find a coupling to fit ORB to this. I looked at the hardware store, they didn't have anything. So what I have to do, and it's kind of overkill, but I have to use a lot of Teflon tape and paste and screw this in, and then screw this in on this end. So this is kind of unnecessary. If anyone out there could find a coupling for this fitting, it would work, but this is what I have and that's what I'm gonna use. All right, so this is what I'm gonna be removing. I don't know what size it is yet but I'm gonna hook up my attachment there first. And then instead of taking off the whole val uh, valve cover here, I'm just gonna undo the oil cap and see if I can hear any air coming out of here. So 
So of course when I start to film it, the wind starts to pick up, but this is what I'm going after here. So this is 11 sixteenths and this is uh, 5 eighths. So I just kind of loosened that up a little bit. And then when I pull this off, oil should start coming out. So I'm gonna get a little plug that came in the kit. Alright, so this is what I'm going to be threading into it. I wish it wasn't as long, but it's what I got, so I'm just going to thread that in there. Alright, so the theory is this. If you run air through the oil rails, the O-rings, since air is thinner than oil, if there's any bad O-ring, the air should escape through there and you'd be able to hear it throughout the valve cover. I'm supposed to take this off, but I'm going to cheat and just remove the oil cap. If there's anything in there, hopefully it'll resonate through that hole. So, just hook this up. It's about 90 PSI. So on this side, I don't hear a single thing. There's no air leaks in the hose either. All right, so I put the hose into the ICP port because that just seemed like too uh, tight of a, a space there. So after hooking it up with some air, this is without this is without the valve cover even being taken off. All right, so I decided to take off this valve cover because I want to see if there's any. Uh, air leaks here. It sounded pretty suspicious. I got one more bolt left. Also, fun fact for you guys, this is the first time I've ever taken off a valve cover on anything. Should just come off now. Alright, so sorry for all these wires in the way. They look like all original injectors on this side at least. And so I'm going to do this air test again if they'd come out. There's these little spigots here, here, and here. And if, I, if there is an air leak, should be here in air somewhere. Alright, I'll open up the valve and get air flowing through here. There we go. I don't see any air bubbles. I don't see any. I'm going to feel underneath the spigots with my gloves off. But I think that noise that I'm hearing is down in the crankcase. Sorry that my hand's in the way, guys, but I got to check this. I'm not feeling anything at all. Nothing looks out of the ordinary. They all look the same. Not seeing any frayed wires. I mean, literally everything looks okay. So I don't really know what to make of this. I mean, I'm definitely hearing air. I mean, I'm sure you can hear it on the audio. There's something gurgling in the system but it doesn't sound like it, those injectors. I'm not seeing any air or feeling any air coming out of all four of those. I put my finger by all those uh, spigots, nothing. So I think that side's good. Now I'm kind of wishing I took the passenger side valve cover off to kind of see, but again, I didn't hear a single thing. So I think the O-rings are good. It's kind of surprising to me. I don't really know where to go from here. All right, so it's a couple weeks later from the last clip you just saw. A lot has happened in these those couple weeks, but basically, uh, the, the truck's put back together. I, it does need new crankcase vent seals because there is some fumes coming out there. But everything's put back to the way it was and still didn't fix the problem. So I'm kind of back to square one. I know what it's not, but now I don't really know where to go from here. And usually when I make a YouTube video, everything is kind of structured in a way where I kind of know how it's going to turn out. And 
you know this just feels like a failure and again it's not a failure because I learned a lot in this video but like what else could it be you know it's not the ICP I thought the IPR even though it's been replaced it I, I'm just not sure I've heard the pigtail wiring can short out uh, maybe it's the PCM just really not not sure uh, I've heard some people can put like tuners in the PCMs uh, come tuner chips and that can mess with it but there's no evidence of a tuner ever being installed in this truck so if you guys know anything about the Huey injection system if you have anything that could uh, help me out let me know because I'm really curious and I want to get this truck fixed um, besides that guys that's all I got for you today uh, sorry I didn't get it fixed uh, that's just how it goes sometimes you know however I do want to say a big thank you to JC Smith projects because this whole video wouldn't have happened without him without his knowledge uh, he told me what to do and how to do it and just a big thank you to him because he spent hours with me over the phone Being, this is my first diesel truck and I didn't know really anything about the Huey injection system and he took me step by step bit through by bit how each individual system works and uh, how they all relate to each other and so that was really helpful to kind of wrap my mind around it and kind of attack it bit by bit and that's how uh, I structured this video and so JC thank you so guys that's all I got for you next week I don't even <laughs> I don't even know I mean maybe the IPR uh, valve is has a clogged screen but I'm not even gonna get into it right now that'll be another video for another day if you want to see some more great content, guys, go down in the description below. There's some great channels down there that are worth checking out, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.